Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Let's go to the article called Red Herring. Red Herring. What is a red herring? Yes, it's a bird, but it's a metaphor as well. Red Herring. A red herring is something that misleads or distracts from a relevant or important question. A red herring is something that distracts from a what? A relevant or important question. Now, keep going. It may be either. I, well, I want y'all to write that down, what a red herring is. I know you ain't writing it down. Just write it down. Go ahead. It may be either a logical fallacy or a literary device that leads readers or audiences towards a false conclusion. It will lead you to a false conclusion. Go ahead. A red herring may be used. Let me give an example of a red herring. 9-11 happens, right? Boom, boom, people die, da 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 da, da. Esau wants to get revenge, right? They say, we, what can we do? No, no, let me think, let me think. Oh, oh, they say, I, they got weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass, we got to go in there and take them down because they could annihilate us. They were all Saudis. Right, they were all Saudis, allegedly. Then they go there and guess what? There was no weapons of mass destruction. And that came out after they destroyed, what's his name? Saddam Hussein. So it was before 9-11, so forget 9-11. So this is once they did that, boom, look what it look. Weapons of mass, that's a red herring. They threw that out there, and all, most of America, especially white folks, yeah, rah, 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 America, America, go in there, kill, kill, kill. Then after they do that, it was a ruse to get the oil. They said, oh, we found no weapons of mass destruction. That was a red herring. So, Go back, read that again. A, a red herring may be used intentionally. Go ahead. A red herring may be used intentionally as in mystery fiction or as, a, as part of rhetorical strategies. Rhetorical strategies. Example given in politics. Hmm. Go ahead. Or may be used in argumentation inadvertently. Mm -hmm. The term was popular, popularized in 1807 by English polemist, po polemist, William Cobbett, who told a story of having used a kipper, a strong-smelling smoke, smoked fish, to divert hunt, to, di to, to Let me read it, let me read it. To divert hounds from chasing a hare, a, a rabbit. Come on. Lord have mercy. As an informal fallacy, the red herring falls into a broad class of relevant fallacies. Unlike the straw man, which involves a distortion of the other party's position, the red herring is a seemingly plausible, though ultimately irrelevant, diversionary tactic. So now, I'm going to show you all an example with Esau's today's red herring. Watch this. Give me the next article, What Are Black Hebrew Israelites? The article on What Are Black Hebrew Israelites? Okay, let's blow that one up big. What are black Hebrew Israelites? And you notice they always say that black, throw that in there. You're black. That means you're not the real ones. That's why they put that there. So they, they call themselves Israelis or like they're Jewish or Israelites, but they don't say Red or white. Because they know once you do that, that means you're fake. What are black Hebrew Israelites, the group Jersey City shooters were linked to? Uh, Officer Tobias, do you want to read this? Can you read this? Solomon, are you going to read? Okay, yes, sir. Come on. I got you. What are black Hebrew Israelites, the group, Jer the group Jersey City shooters were linked to? The group does it don't have a significant record of violence as the Anti-Defamation League has been tracking the movement since the late 1970s or early 1980s. 
The deadly shooting rampage at a New Jersey kosher market has cast a spotlight on a fringe movement known for its anti-Semitic strain of street preaching and its role in a viral video confrontation at the Lincoln Memorial this year. Now, the term anti-Semitic is a trigger word. There are at least seven to nine Semitic families in the earth. All white people, all of them are Shemitic. From Shem came Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. White people come from Esau. They're all Shemitic. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob came from Shem, Noah's son Shem. That includes blacks, uh, Native American Indians, and so-called Latinos. We're all Shemitic. Lot's children also descend from Shem. That's the Chinese and the Japanese. They're Shemitic. Abraham also had uh, children with Hagar. The Arabs are all Shemitic. But because people don't read the Bible, Esau, or I say this so-called uh, Amalek, not so-called Amalek, Amalek, I'll call them that, so-called Jewish people, use this term anti-Semitic because they know people are ignorant to who the Semites are in the Bible. There's at least seven Shemitic families in the Bible. So this is a fallacy right here. And this is why they don't want us on the news with them. We will hem them up, you damn demons. Read on from investigators. Investigators believe that the man and woman who killed three people at the Jersey City Grocery Tuesday, in addition to gunning down a police officer at a cemetery, hated Jews and law enforcement, and had expressed interest in the black Hebrew Israelites movement. Notice the expressed interest. Some article said a one-time follower. And you had, he had, they, and they didn't show the proof of that at all. Notice, they showed no evidence of that at all. So they allege that he came from either the, 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 the fat group who eats the chicken, the refurbished group, or ICGJC. That's allegedly but they showed no evidence of it. Go ahead. New Jersey. I'm going to give an example of that. Remember in Vegas, a child got kidnapped. Yeah. And they called us up and say, we have evidence that you guys are involved in the kidnapping of a child. So we, uh, Officer uh, Gabal was like, what is your evidence? He said, we found a flyer in the home of the person. He said, we give out thousands of flyers. What are you talking about? This is what they do. You, when you walk down, don't you get the McDonald's... Uh, so do you, if, if somebody comes, do you call McDonald's and say, oh, we found your, your thing in the house, your pamphlet? Read that. New Jersey Attorney, attorney General Gerber Gruwal said Thursday, but we have not definitely established any formal links to that organization or to any other group. See there? We have not definitely established any formal links. Go ahead. He said, based on the available evidence... We believe that the two shooters were acting on their own. So you know what it's like? You know how we'll put a, a post on Facebook or Instagram? Somebody who's not an Israelite says, oh, I like that. Let me share it. Right. Then they go, oh, look, he shared an Israelite thing. He's an Israelite. Right. These idiots. And all of that, right, all of this is a head, red herring. Watch. I'm going to show you. Watch. Not all sex of the movement spew hateful rhetoric. But many black Hebrew Israelites subscribe to an extreme set of anti-Semitic beliefs. We have Shemitic beliefs. We all Israelites have Shemitic beliefs. Go ahead. Those followers view themselves as the true chosen people. That's right. And believe that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the true descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. You didn't lie there. Go ahead. <laughs> said, or <laughs> said Oren Segal, director of the Anti-Defamation League Center of Extremism. On extremism. Oh, Go sorry. Ahead. On they view white people as agents of Satan. Hey, 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 hey. That's what the Bible says. We just read it. You'd have, they'd have to burn all the Bibles in the world for us not to have that view. Go ahead. Segal said. They believe Jews are liars. Hey, Revelation 2.9 says that. Revelation 3.9 says that. 
Go ahead. And false worshipers of God. Mm -hmm. They view blacks as the true Israelites and not the imposter Jews. That's right. (laughs) All right. It says most accounts of the movement's followers have seen them proselytizing and provoking arguments with passerbys in places like Times Square in New York. Last January, videos of a confrontation at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington probably introduced many people to the movement. A group of black street preachers who referred to themselves as black Hebrew Israelites shouted... No, they did not yes. refer to themselves as black. See, he so threw that in there. Yeah. Yeah. They don't refer to themselves as black Hebrew. And the brother that was teaching is Puerto Rican. Yes. The hell is this? So. Go ahead. Shouted insults at Native Americans and Catholics. And he was not shouting insults at them. He was telling them he was from the tribe of Gad. Go ahead. I'm and, sorry. <laughs> and Catholic high school students from Kentucky who had participated in an anti-abortion rally in Washington. Videos of a face-to-face encounter between a Native American activist and a student wearing a red Make America Great Again hat quickly spread on social media. J.J. McNabb, a fellow at George Washington University's program on extremism, said the black Hebrew Israelites have used Facebook and YouTube to spread their message and attract new followers. Prisons also have been fertile, fertile recruiting grounds for the sex, some of which have thousands of members, according to McNabb. Once you go online, you find a bigger world. They take pride in confronting Jewish people everywhere and explaining that they are evil, that they are heathens, McNabb said. See, no lie there. McNabb said the black Hebrew Israelites also include elements of the anti-government Sovereign citizen movement. I don't know nothing about that. We, that sovereign, that's that group. I don't even know if they call themselves Israelites. If, if they do, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. But they're the ones that say get rid of your birth certificate, your social security. You get, get, your driver's license. get your own driver's license. Get your own license plate. It's take the number off your house. Them dudes is idiots. Right, but they still use American money. Thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> McNabb said. McNabb said the black Hebrew Israelites also include elements of the anti-government sovereign citizen movement, which has been linked to deadly attacks on law enforcement officers. There is no purity test, she said, when you're generally radicalizing online. You're going to pick up bits and pieces from all over the place. The Jersey City killers who died during the attack were identified as David Anderson, 47, and Francine Graham, 50. And nobody knows who these two people are. They put their picture. Nobody knows them. Go ahead. An Instagram account that apparently belonged to Anderson shows he was an aspiring rapper. Rapper! Go ahead. Whose post included at least one reference to black Hebrew Israelite philosophy. You see that? One, one reference. One reference. One. Go ahead. So he shared something. Yeah. Uh, a, list. a list of the 12 tribes of Israel from the Bible, with each tribe equated to a modern-day ethnic group or country. America has nothing for us but death. A caption or on one of his posts read, the account went dormant a few years ago. So uh, the account went dormant, and they used that, that one post. So it said he, showed a, he, he reposted the 12 tribes chart. Yes, that's what he did. Wow. Go ahead. Or... That, that goes to show that once you put something on social media, it never goes away. Right. If the account went dormant years ago, they were still able to dig it up from years ago. Right. Right. Y'all better be mindful. On Wednesday, the FBI searched the Harlem offices of a major black Hebrew Israelite group, according to a law enforcement official who was not authorized to discuss the case publicly and spoke on condition of anonymity. Well, anonymity. Well, Harlem, what group is in Harlem? That's the, that's, oh yeah, they're in Harlem, comfy. right, right. That was comfy in them, right. Israel, you, wait, you, wait a minute. According to law, but that, it says on Wednesday, the FBI searched the Harlem office, major black, okay, on Wednesday, all right. I thought they, remember they searched their office. Before, they did it a couple months, like a year, a year or so ago. Yeah. Go ahead. Israel United in Christ. Uh-oh. A black Hebrew Israelite group. Oh my God. Go ahead. With more than 40 U.S. locations. And a large social media following condemned the attacks. Yes, we do. 
We condemn the attacks. The Bible said, thou shalt not kill. That's That's what the Bible says. The group said it does not condone nor teach this type of behavior. That's right. Christ said, if at all possible, do what? Be at peace peace with all men. In October, a self-proclaimed black Israelite was charged with assaulting two people, leaving a prayer service at a synagogue in Miami. According to the, the ADL, the defendant, Larry Green, threatened to stab the worshipers to death, called them fake Jews, and told them to go back to Israel, the ADL said. Now, Citing, if we ever find any crazy brothers, we're going to throw you out so quick. You crazy brothers are shooting. If there is, I don't know if there is, but shooting guns, threatening to stab people, violence. We gotta, they got to go. They got to go. Immediately. Not tomorrow. Now. Go ahead. The ADL said, citing an arrest affidavit. But the black, the black Hebrew Israelites don't have a significant record of violence. Very true. Siegel said, noting that the ADL has been tracking the movement since the late 70s or early 80s. Grewal, the attorney general, said authorities are investigating the shootings as potential acts of domestic terrorism, fueled both by anti-Semitism and anti-law enforcement beliefs. Oh, well. So now, this whole thing has been a red herring. Because while all this is going on in the news, give me the next article, Officer Alicia, on Trump. Thank you, Captain Isaac. Give me the next article on our beloved President Donald Trump. Donald J. Trump. An Orthodox Jew beaten in the streets of Brooklyn. Another sucker punched in New York. In Los Angeles, a driver targets Jewish men with his car screaming effing Jews. And exactly six months apart, shooters attacking American synagogues during services. Pause it right there. To kill Jews. Did y'all notice they showed the two black guys that did something to them right now? But they didn't show the Edomites that shot up. You see how they do this? Uh, they, they, and don't think they're stupid. They are very good with editing. Go ahead. 11 lives lost in the worst act of anti-Semitic violence in American history. Poway in April, killing one worshiper. The direct threat against American Jews as victims of vandalism, assault, and even murder is at alarming levels. We're talking some of the highest numbers of incidents that we've ever seen. It's really kind of unfolded itself in a very ugly way. For a third year in a row, the Anti-Defamation League says anti-Semitic incidents in America rose to near historic highs. Pause it. This anti, if any of y'all, if y'all get into, you've got to bring out, we are Semitic. Stop with the BS, with these trigger words. Go ahead. Each of the 1,879 dots, a physical manifestation of hate in 2018. The threat environment today is one that we haven't seen in this country in recent memory. George Salim oversees the ADL Center for Extremism. He has also spent more than a decade working to fight extremism and radicalization at the Department of Homeland Security. The growing deadly threat, he says, is homegrown and overwhelmingly far right and white. There's this concept within white supremacist circles of accelerationism. That means that individuals feel like the white race is in danger and they need to act now. The evidence of the growing threat is plain to see. Synagogues now pockmarked with bullet holes. I was sent to Oh, God, get, get to the article. Let's get to the article, please. Stop. I'm sorry. We get black people get shot up all the time. All day. Come on, man. Give me the article. Give me the title of the article. I can't take it. Zoom in a little bit. And if you notice, every around every Hanukkah or Passover, something happens with these people. And they got to get a police escort. Come on. Stop it. Look at, I want y'all, this is why I said that whole thing about the Israelites with the red herring. Look what's going on here. Trump aims to crack down on anti-Semitism on college campuses using civil rights protections. Go down. Zoom in a little bit. President Trump, President Donald Trump signed an executive order on Wednesday. An executive order. That means you cannot override this thing. Go ahead. To include discrimination against Jews as a violation of law in certain cases with an eye toward fighting anti-Semitism on college campuses. It's an order that would allow Trump to take further steps to combat anti-Israel sentiments and divestment movements 
on college campuses by requiring colleges and universities to treat those movements as discriminatory or risk losing their funding. Or risk losing their funding. So they're going to prevent people from going or teaching on these campuses who don't agree with these people. Go ahead. The order would apply in cases where anti-Semitism is involved and applies only to discrimination concerns. Really? A, a senior administration official told CNN on Wednesday that the order does not define Judaism at all. The order represents a legal judgment that discrimination against Jewish people is sometimes covered by Title VI. A White House official confirmed to CNN on Tuesday that the order would interpret Judaism as a nationality and not just a religion. You see what he's doing? He's making Judaism a nationality now. Before, Judaism was just a religion. Yeah. Now he's saying, so if you speak against Judaism, which is that religion they got, you're speaking against their whole race. And that is discrimination. They can take away school funding. See, and all this, all this was being set up. Meanwhile, look, it's happening over there. They go, look over there. Black Hebrew Israelite does something. Like, Ooh, bad, bad, bad. Meanwhile, Trump is over there signing this executive. Right. No one's paying attention to that at all. And this ain't all over He's the making a new nationality. Damn. Go ahead. The executive order released on Wednesday was not that specific. The order released Wednesday evening interprets Go ahead. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, and national origin in programs and activities receiving federal financial assistance as protecting from anti-Semitism. The Department of Education can withhold federal funding from any college or educational program that violates Title VI according to the Civil Rights Act. While Title VI does That's not... That's all I want. So what I'm showing you is that while everyone's focusing on the imaginary black Hebrew Israelite, who's not a Hebrew Israelite at all, He's writing executive orders establishing the Judaism religion as a world nationality through executive orders, okay? That's a red herring. Let's go back to Revelation 12. We're almost done. And verse 15 again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And you know what? When I read it, I'm not stressed about that. You know why? Get Daniel 11:14. Daniel, see, you can write our president, I'm going to say our president, <laughs> can write all the executive orders establishing Judaism as a new nationality all he wants. Because here's what the prophecy says in Daniel 11, verse 14. Daniel chapter 11, verse 14. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also, the robbers of thy people also, shall... Also, the robbers of thy people, those who stole our land and identity... Shall exalt themselves. They shall exalt themselves as the Jews, as the chosen people... To establish the vision. To establish the vision that they are the Jews, the chosen people. Now you have executive orders... To further establish the vision that they are the Jews, the chosen people. But they shall fall. But they shall what? They shall fall. That's the prophecy. They're going to fall. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. So I ain't scared. I ain't stressed. And neither should y'all be. The prophecy is already written. They shall fall. Every last one of them. Where we at, Cap? Uh, verse 15 again. Mm-hmm. Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So when it says, and the earth helped the woman, give me that in Psalms 85, 11, please. The earth helped the woman. The earth helped the woman. Psalms chapter 85, verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth. You see that? Truth shall spring out of the earth. What? Meaning what? This Bible is going to be taught throughout the earth. The Bible is the earth that's helping the woman. 
Everybody understand that? Remember who the woman is? The woman with 12 stars on her head represents the 12 tribes of Israel. The Bible is helping us. Read verse 16 again. Revelation 12, 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth. The Bible opened her mouth. And swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The Bible is what swallows every lie that comes out of the mouth, out of the media of the dragon. Everybody understand that? So the Bible is what swallows up lie after lie after lie. And they can't take it. They are mad, you know. Give me that in Deuteronomy thirty-three twenty-nine. Yep. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency, and thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. You see what it says? Thine enemies shall be found what? Liars unto thee. Everything the media puts out is a lie, is a lie, is a lie. Was that it? And thou shalt tread upon their high places. See, that? that's when we get that power. We ain't doing nothing now. We can't do nothing now. All we can do is be at peace with everybody. Just sit back. Just read the scriptures. Apply the scriptures. That's our power. Go back to Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse And you 17. know what's funny about the, uh, well, it ain't funny, but I was thinking about the shooting, right? Mm. It's a horrible incident. We don't condone it at all. In fact, we condemn it. But notice when white people shoot up uh, synagogues or schools, they say, oh, the shooter suffered from schizophrenia. Uh, ment- some kind of mental disorder. Yeah. Something mental. But with black people, I want you blacks and Latinos to understand that. When our people uh, lose their mind, they don't say nothing about, oh, he or she suffered from some, like the couple that just got gunned down. Yes. I didn't hear no report that they suffered from any kind of mental disorder. No, sir. But let me show you what the Bible says. Give me that in Deuteronomy 30, I mean 28. Deuteronomy 28, I forgot the verse. Yes. Deuteronomy 28, 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. You know what that means? Mental disorders. Like uh, Gil Noble was just talking on art, the, the video we showed. He made mention of post-traumatic slave disorder based upon the teachings and writings of Professor Joy DeGruy. D-E-G-R-U-Y, yeah. This sister's heavy. When it comes to the mental, uh, mental disorders of black people from the time of slavery, and we have never received any type of uh, uh, treatment for the things, the atrocities we've gone through, rehabil- any kind of re- rehabilitation, it's not talked about in the black or Latino community. But white people, anytime they go through something, oh, they have a mental disorder because they went through this in their lives. Well, what about what we've gone through, what we've seen? Nah, nigga, you okay. That's how they treat us. But the Bible, the word of God says about our people. Read verse 28 again. And this is why some of you brothers be trapped up with some of these crazy sisters and some of you, crazy, some of you sisters trapped up with some of these crazy brothers. Here's the verse. This is what you're going through. Read that again. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. That means half of us are crazy. Half of us are insane in the membrane. Go ahead. And blindness and astonishment of heart. That word heart translates to mind. We are mentally unstable. A lot, not all of us, but a large portion of us. Okay. Back to Revelation 12. We're almost done. Last verse. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. With the Israelites. And went to make war. With the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We're going to see more things like we're witnessing here with those two shooters that gunned down the police and those other three people. We're going to see more alleged things happening and they're going to blame the Israelites, blame the kidnappings, blame the Israelites, blame the Israelites. Okay, and this is why when things occur in the body through our IUIC congregations, We must respond quickly and speedily, especially if it's a detriment 
to any brother or sister in the body or even in the world. We've got to respond quickly. Why? The media is waiting for one of us, like the thing with uh, the sister that uh, passed away, and I think yeah. there was some funny business behind that. Because yeah. where they found her body, they said that was a popular uh, uh, track of when people jog. Okay. And nobody smelled nothing. Nobody smelled a rotting, rotting corpse there. All that time, she was there for months and months, and nobody smelled nothing. Nobody saw nothing. No, you know, how dogs run to things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Not one dog ran over there. But all of a sudden, boop! Oh, we found her. Look, hmm. IUIC member. I'm like, really? Something doesn't sound right to me. But that's for another story. So, to every captain and deacon, we must respond quickly and speedily because there's crazy men and women among us who are determined on bringing us down from within. We can't let that happen. We cannot let that happen. I want to add something to that. Uh, all, you, all your brothers and sisters, all you, especially the leaders, listen, I understand, sometimes I understand your brothers or sisters might get, get together in your house. You might decide to go to a restaurant, do whatever. But listen, when you get together, you take those pictures together, do not put them on social media and put IURC behind it. Do not do that. Some of you put, take pictures of you with a weapon or whatever. Or you go, let's go, you go on social media. Oh, let's go to the shooting range. Let's do this. Listen, IUIC have nothing to do with that. You want to act stupid? Be stupid by yourself. I'm just telling you straight. Stop putting stuff, pictures on social media like IUIC has something to do with it. We have nothing to do with that. You invite people to your house or do something stupid and take pictures, take videos, and put it on social media. They are monitoring this stuff. Let and me you guys put IUIC like, IUIC have something to do with it. No, we have nothing to do with that. Let me explain why. Get second, here's a scripture. 2 Corinthians 6 and 3. We all got uh, things we may do, leisure time, whatever. But Deacon, is, uh, Deacon Malachi is warning you, the media is waiting to take those images and videos to malign this truth. Here's the evidence right here. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse, verse three. 3. Giving no offense in anything... That the ministry be not blamed. See that? Because their goal is to blame the ministry. They're not going to say, Tyrone did it. They're going to say, Israel United in Christ member. That's what they're going to do. Like, what was the Edomite that blew up the FBI? What's his name? Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh. He went to church. But they, to this day, it's hard to find out what church he went to. They just, you got to dig, dig, dig. And find out he was a Christian. But they won't say his church name or nothing like that. But when an Israelite does something... Israel United in Christ member does such and such. News at 11. That's what they do. And everybody's like, oh, Israel United, bad, bad. You're all evil. Cult, cult, cult. This is why we warn you. If you're doing anything, like he said, mentioned going to gun ranges and all, don't put Israel United in Christ on those things. I'm sure a lot, this is a carry, you can open you carry open out here. Carry. Go to the range if you want, fine. And if you have guns, that's okay, as long as it's legal. You got to have legal, right? Don't go, Israel United in Christ. Yeah, here's the logo. Don't do that. Because they're waiting to get us on anything. Watch this. Second Ezra. Red herring. Red herring. I'm going back to that red herring we discussed. So next to your, to the, in your notes, write red herring here in First Ezra, chapter 5, verse 72 and 73. Red herring. First Ezra, chapter, chapter 5, verse 72. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea, and holding them straight, hindered their building. Hindered their building. And guess what? Although it was a physical building back then, today this is a spiritual building. Where's that scripture in Peter where it says, uh, building up the great spiritual house? Two and five. Give me that. First Peter 2. I'm, I'm precepting it with this one. First Peter 2 and 5. Is that the right scripture? Yeah. Read that. Then we're coming back to Ezra. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. See that? We're built up a spiritual house. Now, I'm using that to preset with 1 Ezra 5. Go back there, 572. But so, the, although in 1 Ezra was talking about a physical building, now it's talking about a spiritual building with 1 Peter 2 and 5. Read it again. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea, and holding them straight... 
hindered their building. And by their secret plots. And by what? By their secret plots. Secret plots. Secret plots. So don't get it twisted. These red herrings are popping up left and right. They're all secret plots. Okay? Like the thing with the, the MAGA, with the American Indian, and you had the brother, I think his name is uh, Ephraim. Um, Chief Ephraim. Chief Ephraim, right. The, that had nothing to do with him, but they tried to flip it on him. He's out there teaching. The Edomites approached the Gadite to, 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 to mock, mock him, yeah, yeah. and then they go, oh, black Hebrew Israelite does this. And the brother, Chief Ephraim, had nothing to do with it at all. But they tried to do that. So read that again, verse 73. Watch this. Verse 73. And by their secret plots. By their secret plots. And popular persuasions. That's their media. Their media is a popular persuasion. Why? Because most people believe what they see on TV. What they see on the news. I believe it. Don't. Read it again. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions and commotions. They try to stir up a commotion to get people against us. Go ahead. They hindered. The finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. But guess what? They're not going to hinder this. This is going to keep going on and on. Everybody understand that? Until Christ returned. So in Revelation 12, 17, once again, I'm sorry. Go back there again. We're almost done. We're almost done. You know, I'm not going to do a four-hour class. Like I've been here in Deacon Ithan and <laughs> Deacon Malachi. And, be, and Asaph be doing four or five hour classes. Like Deacon Yawsop was doing. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> I, I said, you know how people got a short attention span? They ain't retaining half that stuff y'all went over. Read that again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we're in the midst of prophecy right now. Now, let me explain this. Let me explain it in detail. Although that's one verse, I'm going to show you step by step how it's occurring. Go to Isaiah 13, 1 and 2. Watch this. Why is this dragon so wrong? Remember what it said in chapter, I mean, chapter 12, verse 9. It said the devil knows he got a short time. He knows. Why does he know he has a short time? Remember the interview I did with the Edomite Castle yes, Bound? Sir. He said, he asked me, well, when is Christ returning? I said, I don't know. He says, you know, you got to look at the signs of the time. He already knew that. They're watching Israel rise. And as they see men, and remember, he was shocked about the women. Because yeah. he, he knows how hard it is for a black woman to be in order with God's laws. That's the, one of the most difficult things on the planet Earth, yes, to get them to do what this Bible says. It yeah. comes to shaking their junk, they can do that. Cursing you out, calling you a bit b nick nigga, she can do that too. But to love her husband, love her children, that's a hard thing. All praises. He says, well, look at the women. They're getting in order with that Bible? Yes. That's right. Yes. You women should give yourselves a hand for that thing. That's right. See, some of these women, they clap and they're like, they do. I don't know if I should clap at that or not. <laughs> I think he got some kind of slick comment in there. No, I don't. I didn't mean nothing by that. So Isaiah 13, verse 1 and 2. We're almost done. We're almost done. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amaz did see. So the burden of Babylon is the burden of America. Watch this. Lift thee up a banner upon the high mountain. The, bur the banner is the Bible. Lift this up upon the high mountain. Babylon is the highest mountain on the earth, meaning what? The greatest nation on earth. You know, when we were in Uganda and Sierra Leone, you know how many people want to come to America? Yeah. They believe yeah. that the, it's paved with streets of gold. And money, they think money grows on trees. No, brother, you have the wrong. Even their ministers, they say, God showed me a vision. I'm going to a, the United States of America. Yeah. Praise Jesus. And they clap and applaud, not realizing that this is mystery. Babylon the Great, mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. Yes, so read that again. Verse 2. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. This is what we're doing. As we lift up the Bible, we're exalting the voice. Go ahead. Shake the hand. When you shake the hand, you're rebuking, you're correcting the people. Go ahead. 
that they may go into the gates of the nobles. That's what I wanted y'all to see right there. The effect of us teaching the Bible and our people not wanting to be corrected, not wanting to change their lives, causes them to go into the gates of the nobles. I'm going to the congressmen. I'm going to the senators. I'm going to the mayors, the governors. I'm going to the president against you Israelites. I don't want to live a godly life. I don't want to live a disciplined life. I like a carefree life. Do what I want. Feel how I want. So that's what's happening right there. They're going into the gates of the nobles. And guess what? They said these people are not breaking laws. They have freedom of religion. Well, Harry, what can we do about that? We got to come up with some secret plots against them. You know, that's the only way we can get them to stop. We got to send in informants, agents amongst them, men and women, to turn to uh, to expose or bring them down from within, make them look violent, make them seem crazy. That's what they're doing. Okay. From there, watch this in the apocrypha, Esther. I'm showing you step by step of things, chain of events. Esther chapter 13, verse 4 and 5, in the Apocrypha. Chapter 13, verse what? Verse 4 and 5. I know you're tired. That's why I ain't going to keep you out here too long. The book of Esther, chapter 13, in the Apocrypha, chapter 13, verse 4. Declared unto us. Now, this is Haman, a, 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 a Caucasian, Haman, an Edomite, speaking to the Persian rulers. Go ahead. That in all nations throughout the world, there were scattered certain malicious people. He's telling the Persian king about the Israelites. He said, throughout all the world, there are scattered as certain malicious people. Go ahead. That had laws contrary to all nations. They have these different sets of laws, different than all nations on earth. And continually despise the commandments of kings. And they despise whatever man says, they go against what man says. That's the commandment of kings. Go ahead. So as the uniting of our kingdoms, honorably intended by us, cannot go forward. So it's hindering the Persian Empire and the Greek Empire from unifying. Go ahead. Seeing then, we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. They said, so he says, these Israelites, because that's who he's talking about, are in continual opposition to all men. Go ahead. Differing in the strange manner of their laws. And evil affected to our state. See that? Deferring in their strangeness of their laws and what? Evil affected to our state. In evil affected to our state. Read that again. The first part above it, before it. Differing in the strange manner of their laws. You know now they're making laws to say that circumcision is barbaric. Not to get your son circumcised. Whatever we teach in the Bible, Esau is trying to make laws to go against it. The rapper T.I. took his daughter to a gynecologist yes. to make sure she's still a virgin because he does not want her living a promiscuous life. Oh, that's evil. And that's, guess what? They got a table of black women yes, to it. bring him on the show yeah. to make him apologize yeah. and to say how he was wrong for that. I'm like, are you kidding me? See, this is how they like to use our people in the media because Esau don't want to do it himself because they know what we'll say. You're racist. So they say, we got to find some of the most ignorant black and Latin men and women who will do the Damn. dirty work for us and humiliate them. That's what they do. Did you finish that? No, sir. Go ahead. And evil affected to our state, working all the mischief they can. Working all, see that? Working all. What is the mischief that we were working? Teaching the Bible. Go ahead. That our kingdom may not be firmly established. Mm, now watch this. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 10. We're going to read down. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 10. The book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 10. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us, this is what Esau says, the nations. Let us, oh, and wicked Israelites say the same thing. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Go ahead. Let us not spare the widow. Don't spare the widow. Nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Mm -hmm. Let our strength be the law of justice. Watch this. Let our strength be the law of justice. Remember in Psalms, I believe it's 64, it says they frame mischief yes. by yes. laws. Yes, Let our strength be the law of justice. This is why Esau, he set up laws forbidding us to read and write. He did that thing. That way they could help perpetuate the lie that we are nothing more than Hamites 
and that Jesus Christ is a European. Why? Because he set up laws forbidding us to read and write. That's one of the beginnings of it. Okay? So he kept, kept us in an ignorant state. So now that we can read, some of us choose to remain ignorant, but those of us who, who are in the Bible, we can show the truth. Hence is the problem. Now they're making laws against um, circumcision. They're making laws where you have to be vac. New York now, you must, your children must be vaccinated or they have to get out of school. Once your children are not in school for X amount of time, guess what happens to the parents? They go to jail. They go to jail. New York is going through that right now. Okay, California got the law already set up. Cali, you must be vaccinated. Vaccinated. Read. Let, Let our strength be the law of justice. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn. And he is clean contrary to our doings. That's what Haman was telling the Persian king. It says, he is clean contrary to our doings. Why? Because we try to live a disciplined life. A civil and moral life. We try to the best of our abilities. Go ahead. He upbraideth. Us with our offending the law. Remember, John the Baptist said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Remember, I think his brother was Philip. I forgot who his brother was. That's the top of my head. But anyway, Herod was pissed. Why? Because John gave the law. And our job with all the nations, give them the, this is what the law says. No matter, listen, remember what Christ said, not to teach any man. To break the commandments. We are not justified by telling the Chinese to break the law. We're not justified teaching them that. We're not justified telling Esau to break the law. Everybody is going, must keep the Does everybody understand that thing? Christ said, if you teach men to break the least commandment, you shall be called the least. That's why John the Baptist said to the white man, it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Who's, what was his brother? Philip. Philip was his brother, to have your brother's wife. Yes, sir. So went, why did he tell the Edomite that? Because it's our job to tell everybody, you better keep the commandments. Because <laughs> guess what? In the kingdom, with all the servants we have, guess what we're going to force them to do? Keep the, keep the commandments. Read on. And objective to our infamy, the transgressings of our education. Mm -hmm. He professed to have the knowledge of God. That's what we profess. We have the knowledge of God. We have the truth. Go ahead. And he called himself the child of the Lord. That's who we are, the child of the Lord. Go ahead. He was made to reprove our thoughts. So we was made to reprove the thoughts of these nations. Go ahead. He is grievous unto us, even to behold. They hate to look at us. <laughs> this is why when they see the black image of Jesus in the Bible, it grieves them. We don't want no big lip, wide nose, kinky head, Jesus. Hell no! Change that thing. What? Sure. You remember that video they put up of Amalek in the restaurant, and there was a sister sitting down, and he oh, walks yes. up and spit in her face? He like threw up yes. He threw yes. up on her. Yes. It's the same thing like you just brought out right here. They yep. can't stand us. They One hate our guts. Yeah. Exactly. Read 15 again. Verse 15. He is grievous unto us even to behold. For his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. That's right, because we keep the law. Watch this. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. So when we say that they're imposters, that's what the Bible calls them, counterfeits. You're not the real Jews, Esau. That's You're not right. an Israelite. You are a counterfeit, an imposter, a convert. Read that again. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. Mm. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed. Mm -hmm. And maketh his boast that God is his father. From there, go to 1 oh, Peter 4. That's right. God is our father. We're going to close out here. 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4 and 14, please. The book of 1 Peter. Oh, I'm going it's almost two and a half. I'm almost catching up with I thought. Let me hurry up now. <laughs> verse Peter. <laughs> 4 verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. So if we be reproached for the name of Christ being in this truth, we're supposed to be happy and rejoice. Oh, I don't know if y'all know, uh, you know the brother in uh, North Carolina that was the police officer, the lieutenant? They terminated him. Yes, sir. So, brother, where's the camera? Brother, rejoice because you're being reproached for the name of Christ. 
And brother, here's our information for you. Sue, brother, sue. Get every penny you can That's get right. from them demons. Every dime you can get. Read that again. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. That's right. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Right. So they speak evil of us, but guess what? The Lord is glorified. Go ahead. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. So we don't want to hear, oh, I'm being reproached for Jesus. I'm being reproached for Christ, and you're a murderer. No. It says, let none of you suffer as a murderer. Why? Because the law says, thou shalt not kill. That's God's law. Go ahead. Or as a thief. Or as a thief. I'm in jail because I'm suffering for Christ. No, you're in jail because you're a thief. You were caught stealing. Go ahead. Or as and the a law says, thou shalt not steal. Go ahead. Or as an evildoer. Or, and that includes anything. Or as an evil doer. I, I was just checking my daughter. Listen, you put your what? Where with your daughter? You need to go to jail. We going to put you a pedophile. We going oh, we going to come down on you with both feet and an elbow. We coming down on you. Don't think we going to we're not going to support that. So it says or as an evil doer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Or don't suffer as a busybody being nosy in other men's matters. Go ahead. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian. So you know what when people say oh, you're a Christian, that don't insult me because it's right there in the Bible. The, the word Christian simply means anointed. If you suffer as being the anointed, go ahead. Let him not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed for being reproached for being God's anointed. We are the true Christians. We are the anointed of the Lord. All of us, every man and woman in here. Go ahead. But let him glorify God on this behalf. Mm -hmm. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us... What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So when we expect things to happen to in this truth. We expect it. Tribulation's going to come. It says we shall through much tribulation enter the kingdom. That's what it means. And if, if it says for the time, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. We are the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Go ahead. And if the righteous scarcely be saved. The Bible says we shall scarcely be saved. Remember what we read in Revelation 12? It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Okay? And by the word of their testimony. That's what it's going into here. And if the righteous scarcely be saved. Go ahead. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So that righteous scarcely be saved. You know why? We right, scarcely going to make it? What we read earlier in Galatians 5. What verse was that? Verse 17? Six, 17. Where it says, uh, the spirit is lusteth contrary. against the flesh and a lust. Get that for me. I'm sorry. You know, I messed up a scripture. Galatians 5. What's the verse above it? What does it say above that? Thank you, Cap. Appreciate it. 16, you want me to start at 16? No. 17. 17. Galatians 5, ahead, 17. 16. 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. This is why we're going to scarcely make it. We're, it's a constant battle within our mind. To do righteousness or unrighteousness. To keep the law or break the law. To live a disciplined life or a carefree life. It's a constant battle. From when you wake up to when you go to sleep. Even in your dreams, there's a battle. You know you have them dreams with the big butt woman walking by? <laughs> And you waking up, oh, shoot. And your wife is like, what was you dreaming about? Never mind. Mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> it's a constant struggle. That's why we shall scarcely be saved. It's a constant battle. So we're in this fight, brothers. We're in this fight, sisters. Go back, and then we can close it out with that. First Peter 4 again? Yeah. Uh, verse 18. 18 again. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing 
as unto a faithful creator. So brothers, sisters, let's do as this said. Let's commit ourselves to the keeping of our souls in well doing, which means keeping the commandments. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.